Day 17 of the one and only Ivan. Going nowhere. I watch Ruby plod around the ring in endless circles, going nowhere. More visitors have been coming, but not many. Max says Ruby's not picking up the slack after all. He says he's cutting back on our food. He says he's turning off the heat at night to save money. Ruby looks thinner to me, more wrinkled than Stella ever was. Do you think Ruby's eating enough? I asked Bob. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, though. You're sure as heck painting enough. Bob wrinkles his nose. The stench is unbelievable. And I found yellow paint in my tail this morning. Bob isn't happy about my night painting. He says it's unnatural. Now, while I work at my art, Bob sleeps on knot tag. He claims he prefers her because she doesn't snore. He says her belly doesn't rise and fall and make him seasick. What is this plan of yours anyway? Bob asks. If you explain it to me, I could help out. <clears throat> he gnaws at his tail. Maybe I could come up with something that doesn't involve, you know, paint. I can't explain it, I tell him. It's an idea in my head, but I can't get it right. And anyway, I'm almost out of supplies. I should have known I wouldn't have enough. I kick at my tire swing. It's splattered with drops of blue paint. It's a stupid idea. I doubt that, Bob says. Smelly, yes. Stupid, never. Bad guys. Most of the day I doze. Late in the afternoon, Mac approaches. Bob slips under knot tack. He prefers to keep a low profile around Mac. Mac's gaze falls on my pool. A corner of one of my paintings is visible. What's that, big guy? He asks. I calmly eat an orange, ignoring him, but my heart is racing. Mac kicks at my plastic pool. Underneath it are all the paintings. Mac yanks on a piece of paper. It slips out easily, and he doesn't seem to notice the other paintings. The page is stripped with green, which is what happens, or striped with green, which is what happens when blue paint and yellow paint get together. It's supposed to be a patch of grass. Not bad. Where'd you get the paint anyway? George's kid? He considers. Hmm, I bet I can get 30 for this picture, maybe even 40. Mac turns on my TV. It's a Western. There's a human with a big hat and a small gun. He has a shiny star pinned to his chest. That means he is the sheriff and he will get rid of all the bad guys. If this sells quick. I'm getting you more of that paint, buddy, Max says. He walks away with my painting, Ruby's painting. For a moment, I imagine what it would be like to be the sheriff. Here's another illustration. Add. Good news, huh? Bob says when Max out of earshot. Looks like he might be getting more supplies. I don't want to paint for Mac, I say. I'm painting for Ruby. You can do both, Max sa or Bob says. You're an artist, after all. While I watch the movie, I try to come up with a new hiding place for my paintings. Maybe I think I could fold them once they're dry and stuff them into knot tag. It's a long movie. At the end, the sheriff marries the woman who owns the saloon, which is a watering hole for humans, but not horses. It's been a long time since I've seen a Western that was also a romance. I like that movie, I say to Bob. Too many horses, not enough dog. dogs, he comments. An ad comes on. I don't understand ads. They're not like Westerns where you know who the bad guy is supposed to be. And they're hardly ever romantic unless the man and the woman are brushing their teeth before they face lick. I want an ad for underarm deodorant. Or I watch an ad for underarm deodorant. How do you know who's who if they don't smell? I ask Bob. Human reek, Bob replies. They just don't notice because they have incompetent noses. Another ad comes on. I see children and their parents buying tickets, just like the tickets Max sells. They laugh, enjoying their ice cream cones as they walk down a path. They pause to watch two sleepy-eyed cats, huge and striped, dozing in long grass. Tigers. I know, because I saw them on a nature show once. Words flash on the screen, accompanied by a drawing of a red giraffe. The giraffe vanishes, and I see a human family staring at another kind of family. Elephants, old and young. They're surrounded by rocks and trees and grass and room to wonder. It's a wild cage, a zoo. I see where it begins and where it ends. The walls that say you are this and we are that. And that is how it will always be. It's not a perfect place. Even in just a few fleeting seconds on my TV screen, I can see that. A perfect place would not need walls. But it's the place I need. I gaze at the elephants and I look over at Ruby, small and alone. Before the ad ends, I try to remember every last detail. Rocks. Trees, tails, trunks. It's the picture I need to paint. Imagining. It's different now when I paint. I'm not painting what I see in front of me, a banana, an apple. I'm painting what I see in my head, things that don't exist, at least not yet. Knot tag. I pull out knot tag stuffing. Carefully I fill her 
with my paintings, hiding them so Mac won't sell them. She's large, bigger than Bob, but I still have to crumple a few of them. Bob tries to settle on her for a nap. You've killed her, he complains. I had to, I say. I miss your stomach, Bob admits. It's so spacious. When Julia arrives, she notices or she notices that I've used up the paint and paper. Wow, Julia shakes her head. You're one serious artist, Ivan. One more thing. My finger painting is sold for $40 with frame. Mac is happy. He brings me a huge pile of paper and big book of paint. Get to work, he says. I paint for Mac during the day and for Ruby at night. I nap when I can. My nighttime picture isn't quite right. It's big, that's for sure. When I place all the pieces on the floor of my cage side by side, the cement is almost completely covered. But something is still missing. Bob says I'm crazy. There's Ruby, he says, pointing with his nose. There's the zoo. There are other elephants. What's wrong with it? I need one more thing, I say. Bob groans. You, you're being a temperamental artist. What could be missing? Here are a couple of illustrations. I stare at the huge expanse of colors and shapes. I don't know how to explain to Bob that it isn't done yet. I just have to wait, I say at last. Something will come to me, and then I'll know my painting is finally ready. That's the end of our reading today. Thanks for listening.